I got there uh, the first of April of '66. I was assigned to uh, Charlie Company, 2nd Battalion, 16th Infantry Rangers, 1st Division. Man, those guys were something else. They were what I thought the military should be. April 11th, we were in line moving through the jungle. At this point, I'm just cotton mouth. It was my first operation. We started receiving fire from our flanks, front, rear, and it didn't take long to realize that <clears throat> we were surrounded. Imagine four or 500 guns uh, firing at the same time. You know, there were times that you, you know, I, I would have got inside my helmet if I thought I could have. I knew I was about out of ammunition. I was laying there and I had my face down um, in, in the dirt. They, um, I was afraid to move more than anything else. I realized that someone was coming across this little opening. It was Pitts, I later found out. He just dropped three magazines on me. I think he said, are you okay? And he was gone again. Later, they assaulted us again, and I just wouldn't be here unless I'd have had more ammunition. You can't imagine the selfless acts that people did. I couldn't move. I, I was ashamed of that for a long time. There was a time in my life where I not only didn't understand why I survived, I almost regretted that I did. Um, not almost, I did regret it um, a lot. I came home, I was dazed. I, you know, everybody, you're home, it's over, don't talk about it. I couldn't relate. Before Bobby went to Vietnam, he was just so laid back. You find one person that leaves, but another person comes home. You really find yourself in a situation where you're just numb. I drank all the time. I look for problems. You know, this is a pool cue. This is a Budweiser bottle. Uh, that's a nightstick. I, uh, I've been beating all the great places throughout the country kind of thing. My family didn't know where I was for years. I just left. I traveled the country. I don't know what I was looking for. And I had just accepted the fact that this is just the way it was going to be for the rest of my life. Typical Sunday, if it's nice like it is today, I'd sit outside, barbecue, or go swimming, and have friends over. <laughs> just relax, getting ready for Monday. That's a typical Sunday. <laughs> my friend Bobby is here, and uh, my friends across the street, and my wife. Of course, she's here. <laughs> As you notice, we don't have any kids here. I have two kids by prior marriage. She has three, and out of the five, only one lives here. The others are grown and they're out on their own, which makes life beautiful for us. <laughs> I met Harold five years ago, and that was the day that changed my life. And I can honestly say at one point, I forgot what love was all about. He taught me how to love again, and I always tell him, God sent you to me. You waited. You was fighting the war to get back to me. <laughs> I was about 21 when I went to Vietnam. I volunteered. I felt it was the right thing to do. I remember we landed in by choppers. I had an eerie feeling, and I felt as though like we were like guinea pigs, and which actually I think it turned out to be we were out there to draw the enemy. So came the 11th that morning. Uh, that's when we started taking a little more fire. 
Receiving sporadic sniper fire, over. Hard to describe. There's a scent that goes along with it. Kind of like a napalm smell, plus the smell of the jungle itself, and all of the artillery rounds going off. It was a war smell. Late on at night, that's, that's when it got real bad. Call in artillery fire. M72 light anti-tank weapon was among the military ordnance demonstrated for the movie star. Mr. Mitchum tried the M79 grenade launcher for himself. Then, as the men chow down, the hero of many adventure films discusses the war with his combat soldier hosts. Following his hour and a half visit with the men of the 101st, Robert Mitchum departs, taking with him a vivid memory of the American fighting men in Vietnam. <laughs> 